welcome to Therapist Spotlight. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Andrew's Therapist Spotlight, the podcast where we aim to showcase our wonderful members to the wider community. I'm your host, Joshua Brooks, and with us today is Stuart Keane. Stuart is a, one of our remedial massage therapists, so this is going to be an excellent conversation. Stuart, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's our absolute pleasure. So, first question, what got you into natural medicine, natural health? Um, so, I kind of transitioned into it from, I was a personal trainer before, Yeah. Um, and I did personal training pretty much straight out of high school, and up until... I must be about 25, 26, and yep. I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different and, and help people in a different way mm -hmm. um, instead of just smashing their bodies. <laughs> so, yeah, so I transitioned across. A, a friend of mine was doing remedial massage, and, yeah, so just followed the lead and transitioned across. Yeah, awesome. So do you still train people now, or are you just purely remedial massage? Um, I do do a little bit of rehab Mm -hmm. on the side um not too much uh because i'm mainly based within the clinic but yep. it's nice to be able to take people outside and and you know go through some rehab exercises and you know just add that little bit of extra benefit to them yeah for sure and i guess it must also be good as if they come in and they're maybe not doing an exercise quite correct you can sort of talk to them about technique and how they're um they may be over tightening a muscle they may not be quite doing to end range and you can talk to them a little bit more and maybe give them some tips about how in the gym they can avoid over training certain muscles and get becoming muscularly imbalanced yeah well like you said it's actually really good to be able to help people balance that out so mm -hmm. especially office workers like you know they're constantly at their desks and you know just being able to say hey look at these exercises these will be good for you or this is what you can do at your desk while you're at work yeah, yeah, for sure. So if I'm a client and I'm coming to you, what kind of stuff do you like to look at? What what, will, what questions can I be expected to ask and expected to answer? And how does that consultation process go in your um, work environment? Yeah, so we're, we're pretty structured in the way we do things. So um, we like to find out as much as we can. Um, we obviously do all the pre-screening and everything as, as required, mm -hmm. um, but more like what we're doing now we'd have more of a conversation about what you do what your activities are what type of work you're doing um and any issues or things that you're having you know with those activities or um maybe something that you've come across or injuries we, we see a lot of weekend warriors at our at our clinic um so it's always fantastic to you know get those people moving and it's so fantastic to see them moving yeah yeah for sure and so, what, like, if, if, if I'm a client and I'm thinking about maybe not remedial such such a good thing for me, what would be those contraindications that maybe you would say to people, you know, maybe seek another modality? And what would be something that you would say, oh, no, please come, remedial can really, really help with it or I can, I can help with it? Um, well, I like, um, so we're based within a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of our clients that we see do come from chiropractic. Yep. Um, which is which is great because, you know, chiropractic is fantastic. It helps a lot of people, but it doesn't obviously do the work that we we do. Well, they don't spend the time that we do with our clients um, and vice versa. So if there's something that, that we see that we just go, look, it's out of our hands, mm. we'll just, we'll always try and refer them off to a chiropractor or osteo or someone, someone else that we have a partnership with. Um, yeah, yeah no oh, excellent and so like what what would be i guess if, if yeah if people are just sort of wondering what what would be that distinction where, where would you refer them on to that chiropractic in your new clinic and where would you just you know be be more beneficial for for a massage yeah i think um i think what we see a lot of uh, people with joint mobility restrictions mm -hmm. and chiropractors are fantastic with that getting the yeah. joints moving Mm -hmm. um so yeah so we do refer them off um for things like that obviously there's a higher range of contra indications we you don't want to treat mm -hmm. um but yeah i think the combination of the two together works really well and we're always happy to to handball them off if we find something especially look neck related issues and things like that yeah for sure and so then i'm guessing what would a treatment look like for people because sometimes people have a little bit of different ideas about remedial massage does it always have to be so hard and um right into those trigger points or can it be a little bit softer or yeah what, what can they expect 
when they're laying down on the table for you when, when you're going. Yeah, uh, so we are pretty firm. Yep. Uh, but <laughs> we we try to we try to do it within a range that's beneficial. We don't we don't like people guarding. It makes it a lot harder to to do what we need to do with the muscles. Yep. Um, so at, you know we always try to work within our our clients' range. Um, and we, we communicate that as much as we can. Um, generally, when people come in, we'll always do a range of motion tests and some mm-hmm. orthopedic testing, depending on you know what we're looking at. Yep. Um, and then we'll we'll treat and retest from there. We're we're pretty active and hands on. It's not that you just come in and you lay down and we give you a, a nice massage. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's interesting. So please explain to people who may not be aware what is an orthopedic test and what can they expect from that. Yeah. So we're using orthopedic tests to basically test for a condition. So you know, uh, for tennis elbow, for instance, we might do an orthopedic test for that. Uh, it will just give us an indication of whether that is present or it's not present. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll, we can base our, our treatment around that, um, yeah, exactly. which is, yeah, ideal. And so what would that look like as in, as in, a, in the terms of like a test for a tennis elbow? Are you looking at like twisting where you twist, where's the pain? Like what, what does that process involve? Yeah, so what we'll do, we apply a pressure around the, the elbow mm-hmm. and we'll take them through a range of motion. Yep. Um, and obviously with highlighted pain in that area is, is an indication. It's not always a sure thing, yep. but it, it is, it's a good indication. It's a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And so then what happens then is, are they, as all of your clients, then do they get down to their underwear? Is it, um, or is it clothes massage? Do you use sort of oils? How, how does that work in terms of your treatment process and what they can expect from a treatment from you? Yeah, so every client is treated individually. So, mm-hmm. you know, we we'll, we try to make sure that when we're treating, it's not just a stock standard massage. Everyone gets undressed and, and we do a full body. It yep. is quite specific. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we spend about 45 minutes with each of our clients. Yep. Um, so that's why we need to be a little more specific than just a general full body massage. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, some clients, if they need to, yes, they'll get undressed and we'll step out of the room while they do that and mm-hmm. we'll drape them appropriately. Yep. Um, but some clients may not need that. Like we said, if we were talking about, you know, tennis elbow or golfer's elbow or things like that, we, we may not need to have them undressed as much. Yeah. Cool. And so then when you are treating them, is it just pure massage or do you do also some stretching? Do you do some like sort of different strength, uh, strengthening techniques, like the muscle energy technique? Yeah. What's sort of the other tools in your arsenal? Yeah. So what, we've got a whole range that we do. Uh, I do dry needling, cupping. Oh, excellent. Uh, we like to do active range, um, METs. Mm-hmm. We, um, we do gua sha as well. Yeah, so cool. we, we try to use a whole range of of techniques to be able to improve our clients yep um so yeah it's not like a stock standard sort of massage we'll do of course we'll do deep tissue and soft tissue work but we'll always try and find a pain-free method to to apply yeah cool and so then do you do also sort of more of your lymphatic drainage and that kind of thing with your with your practice or is that not quite in your yeah in your wheelhouse uh lymphatic drainage we don't really do that as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to refer people off to specialists for that. Yeah. Because um, cool. there are there are some really good specialists around, especially in our area. So I'm in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Um, we've mm-hmm. got some really good practitioners in lymphatic drainage that we, we try to handball them off to. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And what about sort of like myofascial release and all those different sort of fascial um, areas? Uh, is that sort of where you guys are specializing in as well? Or again, is that sort of more of a referral? No, no, we do a lot of fascial release. Yeah. Um, we try to incorporate stretching into that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to releasing fascia um, over just, you know, deep tissue. Yeah, yeah. And so how does that look different from a normal massage then? If people are sort of wondering what is myofascial release and how does it work? How? Uh, yeah, and I guess where would the benefits for people who are thinking about maybe going there where would you recommend you know deep tissue massage or cupping or dry needling or myofascial release where would you recommend for people watching and listening to this that they maybe go and sort these sort of different things out um i think it's quite a difficult thing to explain um Mm -hmm. on something like a podcast but yeah sure you know um 
fascia fascia is quite important to our bodies. It's a, like a protective layering. It's encasing muscle and organs, and uh, we can build restrictions through that that fascia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you can determine whether it's muscle or fascia, it, you know, it could be quite difficult yeah. in, in which one's which. Yeah. Um, so we try to use both techniques uh, as applied. So I think fascial release is really a good way to start. And it is, it's not as hard and deep. So yeah, okay. um, you are applying some pressure, but it's not as firm. Yeah. Um, but it also takes a little bit longer. So, you know, you're not just applying a, a deep trigger point for 10 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. You're applying some pressure over a course of two minutes plus. Yeah, excellent. And so then when you are doing these, uh, is the fascial release not done with oil or can people expect, um, is it is it dry skin? How, how does that sort of work? In terms yeah. Of well? We generally try to use it dry. Yeah. Um, yep. So you, you get a better grip rather than, I, I actually personally don't use oil. Yep. Um, oh, okay. So cool. I much prefer creams like Cosmocream or mm -hmm. uh, Premax, which has got a little bit of grip and glide to it. Yeah. So okay. when I'm doing the teak tissue work, I pref much prefer that over oil. And why is that? Is that just because you can actually, you don't slip or slide as much? You can actually get more pinpointed? Yeah, it's, it just applies, you're able to get a lot more grip with it yeah. um, without irritating the skin, of course. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, oil, I just find, one, I find it really messy. Yeah. But two, I just, I, especially when you're trying to move someone's limbs around and you're trying to get that grip while you, you know, you might be doing a, a passive release, which yeah, is yeah. where we're moving the joint through a motion and applying a technique. Mm -hmm. I find oil very hard to, to do that with. You yeah. just lose grip. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely. And so then uh, if people are a little bit wondering about these products, do you, do you have to have sort of an allergen advice at all or is they pretty safe for most people? Yeah, if people are wondering or if they're a bit, yeah, you know, a bit interested. Yeah. They are pretty safe. Um, yeah. A lot of them are vegan based. Uh, you know, they're non allergenic. Yeah. Um, but it's always good. We we'll always check in before we use them anyway, just to make sure that there aren't any allergies with it. Yep. And so, so for people who are also wondering about like the other stuff that you mentioned, so cupping and dry needling, what can they expect when they come in and what kind of modalities are they? And yeah, what's something that you would explain to a client um, who's brand new to it? Yeah, so let's start with dry needling because there's a lot of people who are afraid of needles. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. And we see a, see a lot of that. My best friend comes in and he's scared of needles. <laughs> um, the the main thing with those, uh, you know, so dry needling comes from acupuncture, which is a traditional Chinese um, mm -hmm. medicine type of practice. Um, dry needling uses a fine filament, so it's very, very, very thin. It's as thin as your hair, so mm -hmm. generally you don't, feel it as much so you don't feel like an injection or uh, the reason why it's dry is nothing can go in or out of it so yeah. it's very very safe um it terms of what you might feel from that treatment is you can feel like a little pulsate from the muscle or a little spasm um that's just the nerve endings reacting to the to the needle mm -hmm. uh, the idea behind that is to generate blood flow through so all our blood carries our natural healing processes um, and we're just generating some fresh blood flow through, bleh, we can't speak at the moment, <laughs> fresh blood flow through to that area. Yeah. Um, it also does a lot of neurological things as well. It's sending signals to the brain. It's, you know, causing little micro damage that, you know, that mm -hmm. just promotes all that healing process. Yeah. Awesome. A lot of people find it really beneficial. Mm -hmm. Um, not, it's very innovative. It's not painful. Um, they much prefer it than me jamming my big fat thumbs into their back or neck. Um, yeah, so it is a lot, lot nicer than than doing those harder modalities. Yeah. Um, in terms of cupping, cupping sort of works the same way, but it, again, it's another traditional Chinese method uh, where we're using suction. Oh, we do fire cupping at our clinic. Um, yeah, cool. There's, there's different types of cupping. There's vacuum cups as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't do wet cupping or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're using the cup um, and the heat to draw basically the fascia and the muscle up. It also brings the stainted blood to the surface, which is also beneficial to get fresh blood flow through into those muscles. Mm. Um, so similar technique to needling where we're trying to generate blood flow and we're sending signals to the brain to, to increase the healing properties. 
Yeah, awesome. And then you mentioned Gua Sha as well. So what's that for people wondering? Gua Sha is, uh, yeah, so it's a really cool technique. It's um, muscle scraping. Mm -hmm. uh, where I don't have any tool. I was going to flash a tool up, but <laughs> um, but basically using this, you probably might, uh, a lot of people have the Graston technique or, you know, it's very similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a range of different tools um, that usually non-sharpened edge tool. And what we're doing is we're scraping the, the superficial layers of the skin um, to affect the fascia and the muscle underneath. Yeah, awesome. And what can you sort of expect after a cupping or a gua sha? Because, I mean, again, a lot of people, I guess, they, they yeah. know the marks and that sorts of stuff, but yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Like, when we talk about uh, the cupping marks, and I remember back when Michael Phelps was at the Olympics and um, yeah. Yeah, the cupping marks on his shoulder, everyone wanted cupping after that. <laughs> um, so, yes, they, they can leave some bruised like looking marks, mm -hmm. um, but they sort of dissipate as a body's natural uh ability comes in to get rid of that yep um with with gua sha you can see some like light red splotching mm -hmm. through the skin so sometimes a little bit of capillary damage where the capillaries have been broken and you get like that little bit of bleeding mm -hmm. um it, it's all normal it's all part of the treatment and it's all yep. part of that healing process as well so um as long as you tell people they don't freak out too much yeah no that's right get them get them, get them used to it uh, well, yeah, we just come up on time. So thanks so much, Stuart, for coming on and sharing yourself with us. So you're out of a chiropractic clinic. Where can people find you and how can they get in contact with you if they want to come and grab some treatment from you? Yeah, so we're just in Croydon in Melbourne um, at a clinic called Mountain View Chiropractic. Yeah, cool. Um, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. We don't. We do have a website, but it's under construction at the moment. So yeah, cool. they, if you look up Mountain View Chiropractic, you'll be able to find us through there. Perfect. And as always, guys, the links will be in the description box below. But yeah, thanks so much for coming on, Stuart. It's been, been awesome, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Josh. No dramas. And for everybody else out there, have a great day and we'll catch you next time. Hey, see ya. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Therapist Spotlight. If you would like to know more about ANTA, visit us at www.anta.com.au.